my last video, I briefly explored hyperlapse waypoints. Today, let's check out the other hyperlapse modes, starting with free. With recording stop, tap on the film strip icon and select hyperlapse. Notice that the free hyperlapse is automatically selected. Before we continue, tap on the three dots to enter settings. Tap on camera. Only by selecting hyperlapse earlier can we edit these settings. By default, JPEG is selected. The photos taken during the hyperlapse will be saved in this format unless you choose RAW, or if you want none of the photos saved, then select all. The hyperlapse video will still be created if you choose off. Tap on the free icon. DJI plays a short video describing the free hyperlapse. In free hyperlapse, you can control the throttle stick, the yaw, pitch, and roll sticks. Tap on the settings bar to stop the DJI video. These are the default settings. Notice that under interval, it will take a photo every two seconds. The total length of the video will be five seconds. And the max speed, as it's set now, is 1.1 mile per hour. It will take 4 minutes and 10 seconds for the duration of the hyperlapse and it will take 125 photos if we don't change these settings, which we are going to leave as they are. Tap the shutter record button to begin. Notice how slow the drone moves to the right. That is because the max speed was set at 1.1 mile per hour. Let's find your hyperlapse. Take out the Air 3 SD card and open it in the File Explorer. Open the DCIM folder. Open the hyperlapse folder. Choose the folder that the most recent one will be on top. Here are all the folders that were taken unless you chose off. All 125 of them. Later I will show you how to make your own hyperlapse with these photos and your video editor. Return to the previous folder. Your hyperlapse video is located at the bottom. If I would have recorded video on this flight, then you would have the SRT, the LRF, and the MP4 for the drone footage, and the hyperlapse MP4 would have a different number at the end. <laughs> Once you have the drone in position, tap on the film strip icon, which accesses the shooting modes like hyperlapse. Tap on circle. You need to select a stationary subject, which will be what the video is centered on. I will drag a rectangle around the pond. Tap on the settings bar. With circle, you have an additional setting for rotation. Default, 
is counterclockwise. Let's change the speed setting. Notice as I decrease or increase the speed that the duration time and frames number do not change. I will choose that speed and then I will leave the other settings alone. Let's start the hyperlapse. Tap on film strip icon, then hyperlapse, and select course lock. Once you have your Air 3 in position, aim it in the direction you want it to go. Lock that course. When hyperlapse starts, it will fly in that direction even if you move its heading. Let's go to settings. You need to be careful on what you set the speed. If it is too high, your Air 3 may travel further than you expected. I will leave it as is. However, I do want to increase the length of this hyperlapse. You might notice that as you change the seconds, that duration and frames are not displayed like on other waypoints. Once I decided on 8 seconds and tapped the lock icon, duration and frames were displayed. So this would be a hyperlapse of 6 minutes and 40 seconds and it would take 200 frames or photos. And yes, in hindsight, I should have locked the course first before I went to settings. I move my heading slightly, but it will not affect the course direction that is locked. Start the hyperlapse, and we'll just go ahead and cut to the created video. Earlier I said I would show you how to create your own hyperlapse videos with the photos that the Air 3 took. Well, I'll show you using Adobe Premiere Pro. First, I imported 33 JPEGs from the hyperlapse folder. Each photo has a duration of 4.29 seconds, so altogether that's 2 minutes and 44 seconds. Select all the photos and right click and then select Nest. Click OK. Right click on the nested sequence and select Speed Duration. Click on Duration and change the numbers until you get 10 as shown. Click OK. You now have a 10 second hyperlapse made with only 33 of the 200 photos that were originally taken. This is just a demonstration. Feel free to manipulate these photos however you like. Save and export as an MP4 as normal. Here is the 10 second result. Earlier in this video, when I demonstrated the free hyperlapse, I showed files on my computer. The microSD card from the Air 3 has a hyperlapse folder 
Inside were two folders containing the hyperlapse photos taken during two hyperlapse missions. The first one, 001-0007, was created on October 6th. This contained the photos from the free hyperlapse. Now look at the DCIM folder containing the Air 3 MP4s, etc., and the actual free hyperlapse video that was created at the bottom. I did not record any other footage with the Air 3 that day, only the hyperlapse. Notice the files from September 27th that I left on the SD card. They all end in 0006. I think it's safe to assume that when the Air 3 created the hyperlapse, it followed the same pattern as seen above. 0003, 0004, 0005, 0006, and added 0007 to the end. So I removed the hyperlapse MP4 ending in 0007 from the Air 3 SD card but I did not remove the hyperlapse folder ending in 0007. On October 9, I went to do a circle hyperlapse. When finished, I checked the hyperlapse folder. Inside were the 0007 and the 0009 folders, but not a third folder. There should have been one from October 2nd, one from October 6th, and one from that day, October 9th. There was no folder from October 9th. But then I noticed the date on the 0007 folder, October 2, instead of October 6. When I opened the October 2, 0007 folder, I found photos with the date October 9, and they were of the circle hyperlapse around the pond from that morning. Back in the Air 3 SD card, here was the hyperlapse mp4 created. Again, since I only recorded the circle hyperlapse, it was assigned the next suffix, if you will, 0007, and the date was correct. So I removed the folders that were inside the hyperlapse folder on the Air 3 SD card. The hyperlapse folder was now empty. Later that same afternoon, I tested the course lock hyperlapse, and after creating the hyperlapse, I began recording on the way back. Inserting the Air 3 SD card into my PC, both folders had the correct date and in the hyperlapse folder, which was empty, now had the 0007 folder and the correct date and time. Inside the 0007 folder we had 200 photos from the course log test. And checking in the Air 3 SD cards DCIM slash 0001 folder, we see that the course lock MP4 was created first with the 0007 suffix, and the next three files are associated with the Air 3 footage recorded after the hyperlapse. And note that they all have a 0008 suffix. In conclusion, if you do not want to risk losing the hyperlapse photos, then I suggest that you remove them from the SD card before your next hyperlapse. If you want to leave them on the Air 3 SD card, at least rename the folder that they are in. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and found some useful information. Thank you for watching and be well.